Hi, welcome to the first class of our course in cybersecurity and privacy. In this video, we will go to the um, principle of how the internet works. And this will be very important, even if you are a user for years and years on the internet, because uh, to remember this principle will help you to, to understand the possible threats that you can find uh, on the internet right now. So without more introduction, let's remember how uh, a website essentially works for you. So as a user, you will have a, you know, your computer, in this case your, your desktop or your mobile device, and you have a URL, so that's the address of the website. So you will request through your server internet provider this website. Essentially what it goes is to another computer, in this case a server somewhere in the world, and that server in the very simplistic but still uh, a realistic way is essentially a computer that hosts a set of files and that set of files is the website that you want to access. So here what you will find is again a collection of files that contain text, can contain some multimedia, some music, why not, okay, and once you made a request, you made a call for the website, the server to, again, this internet provider send back to you this information. So return some information to you. So if we, let's put the number here, number one. If we make a zoom into your screen, let's say, you will see the, the web browser. And the browser, independently of what you are using, can be Firefox, Chrome, Internet Explorer, Safari, Tor, there are many options there. What you will have, again, and this is crucial, your URL. So imagine that this is www.bank.com. So this is your bank, for example. So <clears throat> again, looking in what the browser is showing to you, you can see maybe a video, some commercial maybe, some apps, some information, but even more important, some way to interact with the website. So how to send back some information, how to identify yourself to the, to the server, to your bank server. So this is usually done, again, us uh, sorry, using a, a form. And, and the most uh, common way is a form where you have to put your login and your password. Essentially, it's an, uh, you have to identify yourself. Uh, and so the server will cross-check with some database, essentially a series of tables, and say, yes, this is I know who you are, you are one of our users, you can access to your information. So again, we are talking in a hypothetical example, a bank, it can be your social network, it can be any kind of, of service where uh, you need to authenticate uh, in order to access to the server, the services, sorry. So let's imagine now, uh, again, that you have a URL. So it's very important to have the right URL, why? Because imagine that in this case, you are not in, bank, but in bong.com. A very simple uh, difference that can make essentially no go to the server that was originally intended. But in fact, what you are seeing is a website that is hosted in, a, in another server, in a server that is uh, managed by the hacker. So this, this person or these people essentially, what is trying is to trick to, to take you, sorry, to take you to the wrong web page. But there are very small changes in the URL, but this is basically the address of the server, the address where the website is. So we present to you essentially the same information, but when once you fill the form, once you send your credentials, they will go essentially to the wrong server. And they will host now, they say, sorry, they will, they will have now your ID, again, at least in this website, in this particular server, in this particular service that is, is hosted in, in, the, in the wrong URL. So when they do this, essentially they are carrying with them your ID in this place, and they can now access to the real server, to the real bank, to the real social network, and in this case, get access to your information. So it's very important to know where we are before to give our information, because the makeup, let's say, the, the, the the design of the website is very easy to copy. So we have to be very careful where we are and we will study much in detail in our exercise, how to identify uh, fake and good URLs. 
So, but as you see, if you are in the wrong place, you can fill exactly the same form with your real information. And this information, in fact, will be hosted in a wrong server, in a server for, uh, set up by uh, a hacker or a group of people that essentially will try to use that information to get access to the real bank or to the real service. Or can happen another thing, and this is something that um, um, you can hear a lot in the news, happens that some of these server with, the, again, the, ba the bad guys, let's call it, uh, essentially, they will host not yours, not just yours information, but the information of many, many, many users that will essentially log in into the wrong web page, into the, into the URL star, the wrong one, and give the information. This information, after they usually put it in a package, they say, this is for sale. What that means is that many of the hackers will not essentially, will not use the information directly and go and log in uh, as you. But they will say, okay, now I have the login and password of 10,000 people, 1 million people in this social network, in this bank, in this uh, music streaming uh, service, and sell it to somebody. This somebody will essentially uh, use some of your, uh, those users to, to, to steal some information or, or you know, steal a, even money if, he, if he, they manage to get into the, the bank account. So essentially, this kind of this package go what the, they call you know, the, the, the dark uh, net or the dark internet. So it's very important to be in the right place because if not, your information, the real server, will be used not by you, but by somebody else who bought this package and we'll go there. Or we'll publish this on internet. So uh, again, it's, it's not the first time that we, we know that this, inf this information is, is uh, revealed to the public. And many service providers have to say, you have to change your login and your password because our system has been compromised. Because somebody stole the data in their own server or because essentially they were, and this is a very key word, they were phishing for the user. So how phishing works, essentially, and with this we will conclude uh, this, this, this video, Essentially, you will get an email, it could happen, and we saw many of these many times. So this is email from somebody who says that this is Google, but instead of two L or two O, sorry, it's three. So very small change and said to you, this is your, this is your account, we discovered there is some, some problems, so we will need you to please click in this link so you can provide a new password because you need to change the power because they, they explain to you and they scare you. Maybe they're telling you that uh, if you don't change your password the next two days, your account will be deleted or uh, your access will be lost. So essentially this link is sending you to our famous, or oh, unfamous, <laughs> URL star. So the star, is, I mean the website, the server, that is hosting uh, a fake website and this instead of so you will go there you will insert your information your login your password one more time and this will be hosted and later on sell to somebody else who can really do a lot of damage so it's very important to understand and we will have some exercise in this class to identify and to deal with this kind of uh, spam emails emails that try to 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 convince you to click a link to download an application, to do some interaction with the internet that essentially compromise your privacy or your credentials, um, and that later on can be not just a problem for you, but it can be a problem for the, the company that you work for, because this can be, um, you know the website about your social network, but maybe a website intended for, the, for your company. So the people want to do some uh, tricks to make the, some employees maybe to log in to the wrong web page, to the wrong side and to get access not to you but to information in the com in your company or the information of the place where you are working right now and of course this is this is very very problematic so just to conclude the the cyber security is not just intended for for individual but it's as well we have to be clear that a lot of information that we manage is not just related to us as a person but it's related maybe to our families to our colleagues and to our um, the company or the place that we work for. Um, so be aware of all these dangers. It's very useful not just to protect you, but to protect the people that you care and the, and the systems that are uh, managed by you, if you are responsible or some uh, particular system in your work.